Come on, I feel a praise that's in this house right now. Oh, come on and lift up your voices and give him a praise. I want you to shout until you feel the power of God move something over your head right now. Come on, open. Can I hear somebody holler right now? Holler like you feel like hollering. Hallelujah! Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I want you to do me a favor. Go up and down your row and say hallelujah. I want you to give your row a hallelujah check. And if they don't say hallelujah, change your seat. Make sure you're sitting on the right row because when the praises go up, the blessings come down. And I believe that we as women of God, we've got something to praise God for. One more time, can you give him a shout of glory and a shout of hallelujah? Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, don't sit down just yet. Don't sit down just yet. Let's just clap our hands for the leadership that has brought us here. Bishop Cossie, we God bless you. God bless you, Sister Merlene. Thank God for Bishop Sibley. Amen. Lady Dorothy Sibley, our third assistant general overseer. Come on, if we're gonna clap for them, we're gonna clap real good and make them feel we appreciate you. We appreciate the staff persons, the board that has worked to bring us here. Amen. For all of the first ladies, all, all the first ladies of the state, my state first lady is here from the Coco office, Sister Monica Solomon. Come on, just raise your hand, Sister Solomon. Amen. Sister Linda, Linda Scott from Southern New England is over here. All state first ladies, just raise your hand. If you're here, we don't want to ignore you. All right, I see you. South Carolina, North Carolina. Virginia, I don't know them all, but I'm glad to see you. Now do something for me, do something for me. Look at your neighbor said, she didn't call my name. But she love you too, boo boo. Now do me a favor before you sit down, reach over and, and I want you to hug somebody because psychologist tells us that it takes about nine hugs per day for you to be emotionally stable. And many of us have not had nine hugs this year. So I need you to hug somebody. <laughs> oh, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Find one more person. Bless you, you may be seated. Thank you, Sister Sylvie, for such a wonderful introduction, and thank you for having the privilege to be invited here. I just thank God for the services on, on Thursday night. Amen. Uh, Pastor Devin Wallace spoke to us of the extra oil and that blessed us so. So let's put our hands together for the woman of God <laughs> preached so mightily to us. And then what can I say about last night? The residue, the residue is still in the room. That's why I feel a praise. So anytime that you, you feel a praise break, it's all right with me. It's all right with me. Amen. We thank God for this wonderful woman of God that ministered under such a tremendous anointing. And let's clap our hands for Pastor Anna Ruth Diaz. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Oh, I feel a praise in my soul. In my sanctified soul. Hallelujah. I don't, sometimes I don't know how you can sit down and not say nothing. Touch your neighbor, say, say something in the room. Thank you, Sister Jamil, for such a wonderful solo. I don't know if you know, but Sister Jamil is Native American. Amen. And you don't meet very many Native Americans. Amen. In the church. And we, I do thank God for her. Met her in Eastern North Carolina, her wonderful family. Her daughter, Brooke, goes right here to Lee. Amen. So I appreciate her so much. Listen, I'm an itinerant evangelist. What does that mean? I don't have no other job. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. No other job. And so um, the Lord helps me. He does help me all the time. And so I had an opportunity to write some books. Um, and I hope you're not offended because I really need your help. Amen. On my way to China with uh, Pastor Campbell. Stand up, Pastor Campbell. We're on our way to China in October, and I'm still trying to take care of the tickets and the visa and all that kind of stuff that we have to do to get over there. So every book that you purchase will help me in this, and around Easter next year, we'll be on our way to um, Johannesburg, South Africa. And this is how the Lord helps us to fund it. So the books will be out in the lobby. Um, have you ever been broken? Well, I want you to know it's a journey to go from being broken to being blessed. And you don't have to stay in a broken place. Amen? But you can journey to being blessed. Is there anybody that is on a journey right now feel like you're broken, but you, somebody run up here and get this book right here. This, this would be your, oh, she was right here in the front. I saw you. I saw you. Uh, years ago, I did a, a teaching for the international office, taught a class on women preachers, and it turned into this little short form book and simply called Let the, Let the Women Preach because I find today that people still question whether or not we have the right to stand behind this pulpit. But I want you to know that I've researched it and I do have the right to stand here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So if you still got people that don't know whether or not you should preach, just get this book and it, it'll help them. And, oh, somebody is trying to get, Lord, have mercy. I was, you're too late. She got up too late. <laughs> Spiritual warfare. Lord, have <laughs> She says she needs, if you've ever, if you're working in evangelism, pastoring, whatever you're doing, you need to know how to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. All right, there you go. The Loneliness of Leadership. This is really my favorite book. Lord, see, y'all not waiting even until I finish. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You cannot be an authentic leader if you have not walked in a lonely place. If you have not learned how to walk by yourself and look for nobody on the left or the right, it's just you and God, that's what makes you a leader, the ability to withstand seasons of being lonely. Oh, God. All right. Bless you, baby. Here you go. Finally, it's time to push. Too much potential in you? Touch your neighbor and say, you got too much in you to die like this. Tell them, pray until something happens. Push it out. Lord, have mercy, mother. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. So. There'll be somebody in the lobby, and, and thank you for your support. Thank you for allowing me to give, you, give a commercial. Amen? I know it was a commercial, but God bless you today. I'm inspired by the services and encouraged to go on to be with the Lord. Let's turn in the word of the Lord today. I have two scriptures that I want us to look at. The first one is in 1 Samuel chapter number 3, and I've got preachers in this room. Chapter number 30, I'm sorry. I've got preachers in this room, and I know you know exactly where I am going. 
Amen. God bless all the workshop leaders. You did a great job. 1 Samuel chapter number 30. 1 Samuel chapter number 30. Let's begin the reading of the word of the Lord at verse number 1. We may not get to the other scripture just to let you know it's in 2 Timothy chapter number 1 and verse 12. Timothy, uh, Paul writes to Timothy and he simply says to him, for I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. But our main text is in 1 Samuel chapter number 30. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites, and that, that name Amalekites literally means people that lick up a licking up people. And it's a type of the enemy because it is an enemy that has no regard for anything that is dear to you. They simply are devourers, which is the description of the enemy. He had, and had invaded the South in a place called Ziglag, the place of the winding, Another description of Ziglag, the place of measure being pressed down. And that's what it's like. If you can put your hand on your neighbor's back and press on them a little bit, that's what, that's what being pressed is when you are pressed beyond measure. Ziglag. And they, they burned it with fire. And they had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam, the Jezreel, Jezreelite, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And our text is from here. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people were grieved or bitter, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought thither the ephod to David, and David inquired at the Lord, I'm at a crossroads. I can't go back where I've come from. Ahead of me is my future. Don't know whether I can even go there. Where am I going to do? What am I going to do? And he says, I'm going to ask you, what am I going to do? Shall I pursue Everything is standing in front of me saying I can't move from this place. My own people have stood and they're bitter. The enemy has stolen what is precious to me. Shall I get up from this place and keep going? Look at your neighbor. Say, you shall pursue. Oh, I need you to preach to them this morning. Look at them and say, you shall pursue. Come on, finish it for me and tell them the best is yet to come. You can't stop now. You can't stop now. And God speaks to him and says, pursue. For thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover all. 
Oh, somebody got that already. Recovery is in the house. I want to talk about the courage to pursue. You got to be encouraged to step into future ministry. It is really an honor and a privilege for me to stand here to pre, you know, just to minister this final challenge to such an august group of people, fellow co-laborers, that's what we are today, co-laborers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we've gathered from all over the different parts of this planet, this earth of ours, to come here today, and I'm going to call you what you are. And when I call you what you are, I want you to stand so the rest of us can see who you are. We got preachers in here. We got teachers in here, church planters, missionaries, psalmists, administrators, pastors, prophets, evangelists, professors, musicians, mothers, wives, aunties, grandmothers, intercessors, authors, pastors' wives, life changers, spiritual midwives, Defenders of the faith, soul winners, warriors, worshipers, and willing workers. I want you to look around at somebody and say, I know who I am today. And I'm gathered here because there's purpose in my life. Lord, have mercy. Now, I call you all of that, but I also call you sister because we are the sisterhood of the Church of God International. We're the sisterhood. We are also the handmaidens of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we must affirm to one another before we leave here today that we are women of purpose. Come on, I'm going to ask you to help me. I know you used to just kind of sitting and listening, but you're going to help me preach this morning. Look at your sister and tell her, we are women of purpose. Come on, look at another one and say, we are women of power. We are women of passion. We are women of prayer. And we are women that are in passionate, purposeful pursuit of our future ministry assignment. Pope John II wrote this, the future starts today, not tomorrow. So we're not simply preaching sermons and visiting churches and gathering statistics. I want you to know that we are on divine assignment. And there is purpose to what you have been called to do, women of God. There is power released every time that you operate in the name of the Lord Jesus. There is potential that is yet unrealized for we must leave here with the fire in, inside of us and a passion for what we do and a drive to pursue what God is going to call us to do on tomorrow. And we must finish what we started and complete it no matter what the cost. I believe that every one of you that is sitting in front of me right now, your name is known in hell. There is an assignment. There is a bounty out for you because you are dangerous women. And it's the enemy's plan to get by you and to destroy this generation of souls. And I want you to know this battle is going to cost us everything. When we walk out of those hell out doors, it's going to cost us everything to win the harvest and to step into where God is getting ready to take us. Lord, have mercy. Look at a, just a little glimpse of what the 21st century harvest looks like. This is what we're going to face when we walk out of those doors. Today, within the next 24 hours, 13 people aged 13 to 25 will commit suicide. 16 teenagers are going to be murdered. 80 of them will be raped. And, th and 3,610 of them will be assaulted. 1,000 little girls will become mothers in 24-hour period. Americans between the age of 13 and 25 will contract HIV at the rate of two per hour. 
2,500 children will witness the divorce or the separation of their parents. And a typical 14-year-old will watch three hours of television and do one hour of homework. By the 12th grade, 65% of youth are sexually active and one in five of them has had more than four or more partners. When I look beyond 24 hours, African Americans are accounting for 56% of all HIV cases ever reported among 13 to 24 years old. I am seeing the decimation of a generation. Help me, God. Cults have taken on mainstream appearances. Islam has made inroads in every city. Mosques now dot every city skyline. We're preaching to a generation of seekers who are not seeking truth. Most of the young Americans that you're going to walk out that door and encounter view our church as separatist, segregated, institutional, irrelevant, judgmental, controlling, and authoritarian. I want you to take a moment and tell your neighbor, we're going to need the power of God to combat the forces of darkness. Amen. Families comprise 40% of all who are homeless, families. 42% of children, homeless children are under the age of six. And every 78 seconds, a teenager is gonna attempt suicide and every 90 seconds, they're going to succeed. And one out of three of those teenagers are being treated for mental disorders in hospitals. I know Spiritual families, teens that have been brought up in the church are now on heavy medication in mental institutes. I'm talking about in our church. I know young people in the church that have gone to church all their lives. One is 22 years old, has four children, HIV positive. And they are, they, let me tell you something you're going to be the only one that's going to be able to reach them. But you're going to have to go beyond the crises of our lives as preachers and pursue what God has called you to do. One in three women has been sexually assaulted. One child out of 25 still lives with their parent, lives with neither parent, rather. Can you imagine that? They have no parent. 2.4 million grandparents are the primary caregivers for the children in their family. And I want you to know we must pursue what God has called you to do. And I stand up here as an oracle and I tell you that your time is up of taking vacation your time is up feeling like you can't do it. Your time is up talking about the circumstances don't work out for you. Those are statistics that I read you, but they represent real people that are wandering in this world, wondering, does anybody really care whether I live or die? And it's going to be you in here. All the names that I call you before, it's going to be you that when you step out of that door, you're going to have to touch their lives and bring in a harvest that don't even know that they need to be brought in. Lord, help me. I shall pursue. David finds himself in a predicament. And I like this because he's been anointed. I like to walk. That's why I brought it down. I can't walk up and down the stairs. I can't do it. I didn't stand when he said everybody 50 and under. I didn't stand. So. So here's David, who's been anointed. Now, I want you to know, I know you've been anointed. The 
But then you can't always see where God has taken you. I remember wondering, is there really a call on my life? As I sat on a church pew and did nothing but serve, Michelle. Just served in the choir, served on the usher board, you know, did whatever I was asked to do. And I know that there was anointing. But when was God going to use me? And here's David who has been anointed, but he has not stepped into what is future for him. You're saying, I'm already doing something, but you're not doing the greater that God has called you to do. Lord, have mercy. I need three people to stand up right now and step into where you're getting ready to go. Just step into it. Come on, die. Shebanso. Berababa soto. Randaraba siki andiriosa. I know you're saying, Barnett, you got a lot of nerve to say I haven't done. Yes, I, I'm saying it. We have just touched the tip of the iceberg of what God has called us to do. And he has gathered us in this place. And he is getting ready to send us out to do a greater work. One more time, step into Step into it. Step into it. Step into it. But before you step into it, you're always going to encounter a place called zigzag. You're going to encounter somebody that tells you you don't have the right to do it. You're going to encounter opposition that's on every hand. That opposition is called zigzag. That opposition burns away your confidence. That opposition makes you feel that you are less than able to do what God has called you to do. But I come to tell you today, you will survive your zigzag and you shall pursue. I feel a praise in here. I want you to look back where you have come from. Everybody look back. Just look over your shoulder. Look where you have already come from. Look at where God has brought you from already. You cannot imagine where you're getting ready to go. David finds himself in zigzag. Wives and children are taken away. Lord have mercy. And then the people that are closest to him stand to stone him. But this is where the story changes. I can preach all day about the opposition that you've encountered. I want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about the men that talked about you. I want to talk about the men that say you'll never be nothing, that you'll never preach nowhere. Lord, have mercy. I almost miss preaching and miss my calling to preach because the men on the radio said women didn't preach. And when God called me to preach, I told him, didn't you hear what the men said? And so I'm not going to talk about that part. Those things are the zigzag. But you got to get to a point where David gets to, where you look around your situation. I don't care what it is, and I can begin to walk prophetically and talk to you about your situation. But you got to step out of that situation that's looking you in the face and say, wait a minute, I believe, I remember, I remember, I remember when the oil was poured on me. I remember that I'm not going to die like this. I remember I'm not going down like this. I'm going to get up. I'm going to get up. I don't know who I came to preach to today, but I heard the Holy Ghost say, get up. You've been sitting down in Ziglag worrying about whatever is going to happen, but get up and begin to do the will of God. God help me today in the midst of where we are right now. My first point, remember who poured all on you. It wasn't the generals, no offense, but it wasn't y'all. It wasn't y'all. 
It wasn't the state overseers. It wasn't nobody with no position. It was the Lord himself that took us. If there was anybody not worthy to have oil poured on them, it was me. Sister Sylvia didn't read you my whole bio. Told you about how I came up in a Christian family. Rebelled. My mom and my daddy were preachers in the church of God. And I rebelled because I wanted another lifestyle. And I was in a backslidden condition for over 10 years. And by the grace and the mercy of God, he brought me out of sin. That's why I got a conviction to preach today. I'm not somebody that just came along and I just raised up in and it's, uh, listen, I know what sin can do and I know what the devil can do. And I got a mind to pay the devil back for the years that he stole from my life. So I remember. And I need you to remember who poured the oil on you. I went to remember when I was preparing this. I was in a little church. They invited me to speak. That, that's really what it was, just to speak. In those days, this is so long ago, they used to have like little programs, fundraising programs. And they talked about in the Q&A yesterday about how you get started and all that. You just get started with little innocuous, inconspicuous ways. So, I think I was, it was a little program about the five crowns. And I was the last crown. And I was so green and so new to God, I went to the library <laughs> to get information. I didn't even know nothing about Bible, dictionary, or nothing else. And I went to the library to get information about the crown of life or whatever crown it was. And I remember I got up there. I'm prim and proper. And I'm educated, you know, college educated. So I'm, 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 I'm approaching it from like a research position. And I'm standing there and I'm giving my little speech and the crown of life is this and the crown of life is that. And while I stood there, I felt as if somebody had taken a bucket of oil and poured it over me. I felt something poured on me. I looked up because I couldn't see nothing. And I didn't know what it was, but I felt something poured on my head. And it started moving all down my body. And now all of a sudden when I began to talk, the words came out stronger. And the words came out a little different. And I didn't know what had happened to me. And I threw the mic down. And I ran off the pulpit because I didn't know that it was the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And I want you, I command you to remember who called you. Oh, I need a shout right there. Help me preach to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, remember who called you. You will never pursue future memory. Me future ministry if you never remember who called you and in the midst of David's crisis God reminds him it was me that called you boy when nobody didn't know your name and you was on the back side of the desert in Jesse's house Jesse couldn't even halfway remember who you were Lord have mercy the prophet had to ask do you have another son it was me who called you and that's what we stand in right now we are females but we stand with a male holy ghost on the inside of us who is calling us to do great and mighty things lift your hands because you are called to do great and mighty works in the midst of this generation Lord have mercy remember who called you then when God reminds him, wait a minute, you don't go out like this. Tell your sister, you ain't going down like this. I got your back. David steps out of the pack and he says, wait a minute, go get my covering. Go get the ephod. Go get the prayer cloth of Israel. Go get the Go get the garment of praise. He said, because I'm, I got to, I remember that there was an anointing on my head. And that anointing is not for me to die where I am right now. That anointing is for me to seize my future. 
and he gets the airpod, and he begins to pray, and he says, shall I pursue? Wait a minute. You tired? How many tired? Well, you was tired. You, you should not be tired no more. Not after last night. But you were tired. You've been tired. After you've been tired, you always don't have the ability and the strength to pursue. But last night, the power of the Holy Ghost moved in this place. And why did he move? Because he wants to give you the strength to get up and go forward in what you've got to do for the kingdom of God. And so God responds when you make up your mind, I'm going to pursue. All I need you to do is make up your mind. I feel like I'm not talking to nobody. Make up your mind. Make up your mind to get up and do what God has called you to do. And the moment that you get up and make up your mind, God responds. That's my second point. God will respond. When you get up and say, I'm going to get up to, God gets up with you. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, get up. God is going to get up with you. Kandala basata. You're not getting up by yourself. You're getting up in the Holy Ghost. You're getting up in the Holy Ghost. I rebuke the spirit of doubt. I rebuke the spirit of fear. You are getting up in the Holy Ghost. Kandala basata. I hear the Holy Ghost just keep saying, get up, get up. To many of you been sitting down. Yes, you're credential. Yes, you're called. Yes, you're anointed. But you're sitting down in zigzag, looking at the fire, looking at what's burned up, looking at what you've lost, looking at what you don't have. But I hear the Holy Ghost say, get up. One more time, turn around and tell somebody, get up, get up, get up, get up out of this slump. Get up out of this slump. Get up out of it. Get up, get up. Holy Ghost said, I've anointed you, and you've not done nothing with my anointing. You're preached a few sermons, and you think that's it. But I hear the Holy Ghost said, I got so much greater. I got so much more, but I can't pour it in you right now because you won't get up. You got to get up. I know you're facing zigzag. I know that there's a struggle. I know that there's bad opinion. I know that nobody wants you to open your mouth, but I hear the Holy Ghost say, get up. I'm about finished. I'm about finished, so I got to get out of here. And when you get up, I'm finished. God brings revelation. If you want revelation, get up. If you want revelation, make up your mind. I will pursue. I will go after what God has called me to do. You need revelation. You need the revelation of the Holy Ghost. What does God do? God shows him where the Egyptian is. And the Egyptian is going to lead him to, the, uh, to, the, to where the... Amalekites are. We need revelation. We cannot get a harvest if without Holy Ghost revelation. Put your hands on your eyes and say, I need revelation. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Come on, lift those hands and say, open my eyes. Open my eyes, open my ears. God help me. Open my eyes. 
open my ears. And when you begin to walk in revelation, reveal today. Reveal the next path. Come on, walk with me. Reveal the next step. This is what I need the Holy Ghost to do for you. He needs to reveal where you're going next. He needs to reveal the next move. He needs to reveal your next assignment. God, send the power of revelation in our spirit. Reveal to us where to go next. Uh, don't let us be bitter. Don't let us be mad. But reveal to me. Reveal my harvest. Reveal my field. Reveal where I've got to work. Reveal where I'm going to do. I pray for divine revelation. I pray for revelation. And when God reveals, the next thing he does, he revives you. He came and he revived us last night. Lift your hands for revival. We cannot preach without revival. We need revival in our spirit. In the class that I was in, my God, Michelle talked about you got to take that time with him to be revived. We must be revived. Listen to me. I've been in this church just as, like you have for years and years and years. And if you listen to everything and look at everything, especially when it comes down to women, you'll get discouraged. But I refuse to go out like that. I'm going to keep a revival in my soul. I don't care if they never make us nothing in this church. I don't care if they don't never ordain us. I'm going to have revival in my soul. Lift your hands. Revival. You got to bring, you got to speak life to yourself. Prophesy to yourself. Prophesy to yourself, I shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. Prophesy to yourself, I'm going to get up and obey God. Prophesy to yourself, breathe on me one more time. Breathe on me one more time. Lift your hands. Only two things remain and I'm finished. After revival comes restoration and recovery. Remain standing. My time is up. Shun the Rio side. I'm 63 years old. And the Holy Ghost says to me, your ladder shall be greater. I say, what? I say, how? I've been preaching for 30 some years. How can my ladder be greater than my past? He said, you get up. You get up and you start moving. You move. And when you move, I'm going to allow you to recover everything that was stolen. When you get up and move, I'm going to refresh you. I'm going to give you strength in your body. I'm going to give you strength in your mind. Lift your hands. God help me. Move this out the way. God said, you shall recover. How many of y'all ready to pursue now? 
I shall pursue. You got to get up tomorrow morning and you got to open your mouth and say, I shall pursue. I shall preach. I shall teach. I shall prophesy. And whatever door you open, baby girl in that yellow blouse, will you open those doors right there? Come on, open them. Somebody go with her and open them right now. Look how that door opens. That's the door that God is getting ready to open for you. When you make up your mind, I'm going to get up and do what you have called me to do. The Holy Ghost said you're going to run through an open door right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And if you are ready to pursue, listen to what I'm going to ask you to do. Come on, Sister Jackie. Come on, Pastor Diaz. Come on, women. Come on. Come on, Campbell. Women pastors. Come on, Michelle. Come on, Carla. Come on, First Lady. Come on, Mary Ruth, and help me. You make up your mind. Do I, I need some? I need some more women preachers to get on this line. If you make up your mind that you want to pursue, I want you to come up here and we, we just going to pray for you. Just start all the way down there and come all the way down here. And every last one of us just go that way. Just go this way. Every, every last one of us are going to pray for you. Pursue. Pursue the anointing for greater ministry. Pursue the prophetic in your life. I tell Aboshe. Pursue!
looks like the enemy stands with 50 million things to stop you. And the Lord spoke this to me. Make up your mind to keep moving. You can move even though you may have a broken heart. But I heal your heart while you're moving. He'll build your confidence, but move. The word encouraged means to strengthen yourself. I just want you to grab a sister by the hand, just one, just one. Let's get you a partner. And I want to stand and I want to prophetically declare that a brand new season of ministry opened 
Can you go, it's a new season. Yes. It's a new day. Fresh anointing. It's coming your way. Season of power. It's a new season. Season of grace. It's a new season. Coming to me. Are you ready? To step in your new season? Get you some room. It's a new day. It's a new day. Come on, brother. Brand new anointing. Flowing my way. Season of power. Prosperity. And prosperity. I'm going to count to three. I'm going to count to three. And at the count of three, I want you to start moving. And watch God send you a new into a brand new season. It's a new season coming. Yeah. It's a new season coming. But there's one coming for you too. I know you don't want to hear this. But the door is opening, even the more for international ministry. God said, all I need you to do, walk through it. You don't know which way you're going, and you don't know what God's getting ready to do, but if you're willing to trust him and to step through a new season, will you do that right now? One, two, and when you get to, when I say number three, and you cross over into a new season where you shall recover it all, I want you to give God the greatest praise you can imagine out of your spirit. Are you ready right now? One, two, three. It's a new season. It's a new day. It's a new day. Fresh anointing. It's flowing your way. It's coming your way. It's a season of power. Prosperity. Prosperity. It's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new season. 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 It's a brand new season. It's a brand new anointing. It's a new season. Lift your hands for this season. It's a new season. Oh, a new season. It's a new season. God is getting ready to lift you up above your enemies. God is getting ready to elevate your head. It's a new season. It's a new season. It's a season for a brand new anointing. It's a new season. It's a season for a brand new anointing. It's a new season. It's a new season for the Holy Ghost. It's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new season. 